What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 10 in the North Carolina Math 1 questions that were released this past school year. The question tells us that water is being pumped into a cylindrical tank at a constant rate. I'm going to go ahead and say right off the bat, the 10 foot tall thing is probably not going to matter. We know that the depth of the water is increasing linearly, and we have different times and different depths, and we're supposed to figure out what the depth is going to be at 5 p.m. Now the big skill that this question is going to test your ability to recognize and find is rate of change from a word problem. So let's go ahead and talk about what exactly that means. Now rate of change is another way of saying slope. Um, I'm using rate of change in this problem because we're actually going to have to find the rate at which our water depth is changing. So whenever we have time in a problem, it is a safe bet to make time your denominator in a slope or rate of change fraction. Unless you have some indication that that's definitely not what you do, we'll assume that the water or that the depth is changing over time, literally over time. So let's go ahead and figure out the change in depth and the change in time. So if I wanna figure out the change in depth, I can take 3.9 and 2.4 and subtract that. And if I want to figure out the change in time, I can take 4 o'clock, subtract 130 from that. And so now I just need to do a quick bit of subtraction to figure this out. 3 and 9 tenths minus 2 and 4 tenths. 9 tenths minus 4 tenths is 5 tenths. 3 tenths minus, or 3 minus 2 is just 1. So this is one and a half feet over the course of, and now four o'clock minus 130. This subtraction is gonna be a little bit weird, but we can do it in a very similar way. Zero minus zero is just zero. If I have zero um, tens of minutes and I wanna take away three tens of minutes, I'm gonna to have to borrow an hour and turn this into six tens of minutes. Now six tens minus three tens gives me three tens. Three hours minus one hour gives me two hours. This is two hours and 30 minutes, also known as two and a half hours. So now I have one and a half feet in two and a half hours. That must be a big cylinder or a very slow pump. But anyway, now that I know that it's one and a half feet in two and a half hours, uh, there's a couple different ways now that I can go about actually figuring out the unit rate in terms of how many feet the water is increasing by every one hour. Um, I could change this into an improper fraction and go ahead and do a fraction division. I could try to divide the decimals. I'm going to do it the dividing fractions way because I think it's a bit easier. I uh, keep, change, flip. 3 halves stays at 3 halves. Divide changes to times. 5 halves gets flipped over to 2 fifths. I can cross out a 2 from the bottom and the top, and that will just get me 3 fifths, which if I want to turn that back into a decimal is the same thing as 6 tenths. So if I have a rate of change fraction, that's 6 tenths of a foot for every 1 hour. So now... I need to go back to the actual words in my word problem, and I'm gonna say that if I go from four o'clock to five o'clock and add one hour to get from 3.9 feet to whatever that depth is, I need to add six tenths, and three and nine tenths plus six tenths is gonna get me four and five tenths. Now that was a really weird rate of change problem, mostly because of the time aspects, but, um, once we figured out that it, we were supposed to measure how the depth of the water was changing over time, literally over time again, that gave us the fraction language, we took the later depth minus the earlier depth, the later time minus the earlier time, we had to do some finagling with the decimals, with fractions and so on, and again, there were a couple other ways to get six tenths of a foot in one hour, but then we just had to extend four o'clock to five o'clock, add one hour, add the corresponding change, in the depth of the water and we got four and five tenths. Now at this point, the only thing we have left to do is practice actually answering this. And this is gonna be a bit trickier than the other gridded response problems that we've done so far because I'm going to need 
to give my ones place and my tenths place their own spot, but also my decimal point. And I would find my four bubble underneath my four, my decimal bubble underneath my decimal, and my five bubble underneath my five and bubble all of those in. And that is how you do a tricky, crazy, insane, wonky rate of change question.